Sup friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I make guides and tutorials on how to play the piano by ear, improvise, transcribe songs, and level up your piano playing in general. Today, we'll be running through the circle of fifths and the diatonic circle of fifths. What they are, how to recognize them in songs, and how to use them in your improvisations. Once again, to keep things simple and minimize the amount of black keys we need to deal with, this entire video will be in a key of A minor, which has the least black keys. This here is the circle of fifths, and is a way of organizing the 12 chromatic pitches as a sequence of perfect fifths. If you're not that familiar with intervals, a perfect fifth interval is the distance between the first note and the fifth note of either a major or a minor scale. If you're not that familiar with scales either, two notes that are a perfect fifth apart are seven semitones apart. Simply put, the circle of fifths is just a way we arrange our 12 notes on a piano, and we can expand on this to create some really cool sounding chord progressions. These chord progressions that are based on the circle of fifths are known as circle progressions. Here are two examples of songs that use a circle progression. Once again, here are the two chord progressions used in the earlier two songs, and let's dive right into how we can arrive at these progressions. The first thing we need to know is that both songs follow the diatonic circle of fifths instead of the whole circle of fifths. Simply put, the diatonic circle of fifths contain only notes in our home key. For instance, both examples are in the key of A minor, an alternate between the A natural minor scale and the A harmonic minor scale, which just means that the note G is occasionally replaced with G sharp. As such, instead of following the circle of fifths 100%, the progressions follow it most of the time, but minor changes are added to keep the chord progression inside the home key. For instance, let's start with the note A. As we are in the key of A minor, the chord here naturally becomes an A minor chord. Next, we have the note D. Following the A minor scale, it naturally becomes a D minor chord instead of a D major chord. We repeat this for the next notes G, C, and F, and get the G major, C major, and F major chords based on the notes inside the A minor key. Based on the original circle of fifths, the next note that comes after F should be a B flat. However, as we are following the diatonic circle of fifths instead, and B flat is not in the A minor key, we replace the note B flat with a B instead. Using the notes in the A minor key to construct a chord, we naturally get a B diminished chord. From B, moving down the circle of fifths once more, we get the notes E, then A again. As we are using both the A natural minor scale and the A harmonic minor scale, both E major and E minor are possible candidates. However, for this case, the E major chord seems to have a stronger turnaround sound to go back to A minor, so we use the E major chord instead of the E minor chord. And there, we have the 7 chords based on the diatonic circle of fifths. A minor, D minor, G major, C major, F major, B diminished, E major, and back to A minor once again. The second thing we need to know is that circle progressions need not necessarily start with an A minor. For the case of autumn leaves, the starting chord is a D minor chord instead of an A minor chord. However, it continues to follow the diatonic circle of fifths after the D minor chord, moving on to the G major chord, the C major chord, and so on. The third thing we need to know is that we do not strictly need to run through the entire diatonic circle of fifths and can add in chords outside of the circle if we wish to. For instance, in Autumn Leaves, the progression starts on a D minor and follows the diatonic circle of fifths until A minor. Then it goes on to an A major chord, which isn't part of the circle. Instead, the A major chord is added here to lead back to the D minor chord seamlessly in the next section. They may follow the circle say 80% of the time, but may add in additional chords that are not inside the circle. Now we have a better idea of how these circle progressions work, the next natural step to being better able to recognize them in songs would be to familiarize yourself with them. There are multiple ways you can do this, including learning songs that use chord progressions as well as improvising with these progressions. I've compiled a bunch of songs that make use of the diatonic circle of fifths in their progressions, and I challenge you to figure out the chord progressions behind them. For each song, I'll play certain sections, once with both melody and chords, and a second time but only with the melody. As I strongly believe in a concept of learning by doing and experimenting, I highly encourage that you actually try this with your piano and try to figure out the chords of the songs while playing together with me.
With that, thanks for watching, and I hope this video has provided some sort of value for you. Do let me know in the comments down below if the exercises have been useful, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!